playing the Radical Latino Show. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands in the air for New York's Radical. Oh, Latino is taking you to another level. people welcome back to another episode of the radical latino show it's your host the radical latino what is popping my people now this is episode 91 now i hope everybody is enjoying all the other archives (laughs) of episode 90 and down you know what i'm saying but this is uh this is gonna be basically a refresher episode why am i calling it a refresher episode is because I, this is a, basically a user requested um, episode, and I'm going to explain why is it a user requested episode. I'll explain that later on, but it's a user requested episode. And sometimes, you know, even though I have tackled these type of topics, for so, a lot of new um, listeners, a lot of new subscribers, a lot of times you guys don't know that I already tackled these type of topics and go through my podcast archives and hear the top type of topics that I already tackled and already talked about. But sometimes it's good to refresh and, you know, bring the family up to speed. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's really good. But before I get into all of that, how you guys doing? You know, a lot of cities are opening up due to COVID. Um, a lot of uh, people going back to work and everything is starting to gradually get back to normal. And the thing is that what this, this, um, pandemic has shown us that the, the era of, you know, content, the era of the internet, it's something new that we have to adapt from. And a lot of people didn't know how adaptable we were and how privileged some of us are in the modern age where we don't have to basically go to a location to do our job when we could do it remotely. Right now, due to the you know age of the internet, there's a lot, a lot of jobs right now coming up that you can do remotely. Believe it or not, that's actually paying extremely well. Believe it or not, you know what I'm saying? Believe it or not. So, um, I'm I'm seeing just just a, a just a quick uh, you know insight. I'm I am seeing that uh, a lot of people. What I'm uh, what I'm seeing is that um, certain businesses and certain industries are being disrupted due to this pandemic. This gives room for a lot of people to actually grow and invent new things. And this is something that we have to be in the forefront of. Black and Latin people, we have to start being in the forefront of these, you know, um, good, unfortunate, um, um, it's for unfortunate to say, but good tragedies. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a story. When 9-11 happened, it was a crazy tragedy. Extremely crazy tragedy. But, a lot of people saw something good and something crazy, horrible and horrific. There's literally stories of Wall Street guys cheering when those towers fell down because the price of gold just went up and people got rich off of those tragedies, believe it or not. So that's what I'm saying is we got to start taking opportunities and seeing opportunities in good in bad tra- tragedies, you know what I'm saying? So I think this should be an opportunity where some of us who are like-minded, some of us who are, you know, who has a have a passion for a certain thing, will actually excel a lot faster in uh, in these type of times. You know what I'm saying? Right now, content, literally, who even me, content is king right now. You see a lot of shows being shot at home. They look like YouTubers, believe it or not. They look like YouTubers with literally a quarter of a budget that that they're they're doing. They look like YouTubers, 
right now content is king and people are starting to see that hey listen this whole uh you know self-made content thing could be you know uh, a good you know a good thing you know what i'm saying so i just wanted to give that little tidbit out there where i'm saying hey guys listen you guys gotta see opportunities when they come in you know what i'm saying also this podcast like i said it's episode 91 is getting close to that episode 100 100 yes 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 thank you thank you thank you thank you episode 100 is getting close to that so um with that being said i got something very you know special for y'all hopefully if it follows through hopefully if it follows through i got something very special for y'all also anybody that is not subscribed to my youtube and that is not subscribed to my youtube i put out a sneak peek a sneak peek design that i'm working on with um with a partner of mine on putting out some merch so i'm gonna be dropping that trailer soon i just gotta get all the details finalized pretty much and i'll be dropping some merch pretty soon but um i i uh i do have some you know i I put out a sneak peek and a lot of people enjoyed it so if you guys want to know what that sneak peek is go to my youtube on my community tab and you'll see what i'm talking about but so far i am thinking of dropping some merch and having it uh, have a limited run i want it ha- i wanted to have a limited run and basically towards uh, you know towards the end of the summer so i want to have it from the beginning of the summer all the way towards the end of the summer and that's what i want to have i want to have a limited run and i want to have hoodies shirts phone cases of whatever color you guys want and have just a and just have it out there you know and have a limited run just to see if you guys you know if you guys like it if you guys mess with it if you guys enjoy it you know what i'm saying so hopefully that will be a good thing for y'all you know what i'm saying also i have a lot of interviews lined up very special interviews lined up down the pipeline i just gotta get them secured you feel what i'm saying i gotta get them secured and all that but i got a lot of interviews lined up so you know just just look out for for a lot of them you know what i'm saying because i threw out i think was a couple of weeks ago i went through a whole interview run you know what i'm saying i went through a whole interview run so i was just pumping interviews out because these were either backlogged or i didn't want it to wait i wanted for people to actually sink their teeth into and just you know enjoy what it is you know what i'm saying but that's basically what it is you know um i got a lot of interviews lined up i'm i'm securing more interviews and there's one special interview that i gotta basically secure i don't want to put it out there but i want to secure before you know anything happens so hopefully that that gets done you know what i mean and also um i want to just just uh tackle this real quick and then i'm gonna move on um usually when when a lot of people like especially like like me come out and start talking about you know white supremacy and injustice and letting people got to stick together and all this other stuff a lot of times you get a lot of hate with hate you'll get response videos based on that type of hate okay and there's one new individual i'm not gonna say this person's name because they're pointless and they're useless i'm not gonna say this person's name but this new person actually put out a video about me it didn't last long because it got taken down um i so happened to see it it was up for a day and then it got taken down um again I did not do anything to take it down. Literally, there's other people that did videos about me. I never took anything down. But this individual did a video about me and got um, taken down by outside forces. I don't know. I don't know. I could care less. But this one individual contacted me on Instagram, basically bugging out and butt hurt because he thinks that I took down his video about me which i'm telling him i did not you know what i'm saying i just want to put it out there i don't have to take videos down 
I literally know of no nobodies with 13 subscribers who are basically, you know, just a little speck on a wind windshield. They're nobodies. You know, they're trying to just get fame out my name and all that other shit, it's whatever. But there's no reason for me to do so. You know what I mean? You're, you're basically a nobody. Why should I care about taking your little bullshit video down? You know what I'm saying? It was actually... Uh, it, and the funny thing is, I've noticed that usually when some of these people, they want to take, a, um, you know, shots at me. They never take shots at the content that I'm talking about. They never break down the shit that I say. They always either take shots at my character or take shots at the fact that I don't know what I'm talking about because I sound stupid and all that. And I just find it very interesting. I'm like, okay, um, that's a kind of, that's kind of an interesting take on it. Why aren't you guys trying to debunk what I'm saying? The information that I'm putting out, you know why? Because you can't debunk facts. You can't debunk real shit. You know what I'm saying? You can't. You can't, um, you know, when I say something like, you know, um, when I say something that's factual and that you could see this historically, like, like, uh, the Haitian revolution was very beneficial for Latin America as well. If I say something like that and somebody wants to hate, they can't really go against that because that's a factual thing. You will go, you will go online and you will find out historically that the Haitians helped out a, a Latin American countries get out of slavery. And you're like, ah, shit, how can I really come uh, combat with that and compete with that? You know what I'm saying? So I find it very interesting that a lot of those people who do these little videos here and there, here and there, here and there, don't really talk about, you know, anything else, but you know how I sound and how I maneuvering all this other stuff. I just find it very interesting. I'm like, okay, so you can't really, you know, say anything bad about what I'm really saying, you know, because you guys know it's true. You know what I'm saying? Like, the shit, the, the, the shit is a little, the shit's a little funny style. You know what I'm saying? It's a little funny style. But anyway, last week's episode was episode 90: historical benefits of black and brown unity. Now, I put this episode out because I was constantly, constantly, constantly hearing and constantly, constantly, constantly being told that black and brown unity is not something that ever happened. Black and brown unity isn't something that never occurred. There's no such thing as black and brown unity, but historically, you do see that black and brown people helped out each other historically historically you do see that black and brown people came together at one point to deal with our oppression that was white supremacy so whenever you hear these type of people that talk about oh black and brown unity that that's a that's a myth that never occurred you know that remember one they're misinformed two they're uneducated about it and three even if they're not ed uneducated about it or misinformed, they have an agenda because they don't want to acknowledge those type of things. They have an agenda. So that's all right. It's all good. You know what I'm saying? But I just want to say that and get that out the way before I read some of the comments. You know what I'm saying? Now on episode 90, I got a couple of comments like, Hercules, shout out to Hercules. He says, good work, brother. Castro was the most black power figure of all time. And that's true. Fidel Castro, regardless how much of a dictator he is and all of this other crazy stuff, regardless, regardless, the thing is, he did a lot for the black community here in the States. You know what I'm saying? He did a lot that United States didn't even want to acknowledge that. You know what I'm saying? He did a lot. He did a lot. You know what I'm saying? So that's something that's something we should definitely, you know, at least know about and admire. You know what I'm saying? Um Dr. Power says we do need to unite. I didn't know the Pan-African Library in Harlem was started by a Puerto Rican. 
man which is true that's something i also talked about that the the pan-african uh you know library in harlem where most of these morris science temple and Rashi Allah and all these other people, you know, go, you know, alkaline water, hotep, you know what I'm saying? All these people go and get their information was started by a Puerto Rican man. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that. You know what I'm saying? Um, Derek says, I was called the N word in the fifth grade, but then I just showed me and he taught me about household and sisters were around me i remember I, I all the talk shows with people who didn't like the other ethnic groups da -da 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 -da. um i agree everyone has prejudices but it's up to us to check it yeah i agree i definitely agree it said uh, johnny mill says radical latino i couldn't agree more with with you blacks and browns should unite because of the history we have with each other you know what i'm saying there you go um what did all right kiss mac now this is what i'm referring to these are the type of people we don't need to build with if you i said that in the beginning of episode 90 not in the beginning but the beginning of the the main topic i said that in episode 90 if you are already coming in with you know self-doubt and historical pains from another a group that did whatever to you and you're lumping the whole group with the with, with the same mentality we can't we 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 can't unite you know what i'm saying we can't we can't come together you you have something that you have to heal heal with you know what i'm saying we don't need broken people around us so Kiss Max said, you just talk about a few things Latinos have done, which has no comparison to what blacks have done. Latinos gracefully benefit from blacks. Agree and disagree. The whole point of that episode 90 was not to say who benefits more, who benefits, um, who gets more out of it. I'm not there to take a tally. I'm not doing none of that bullshit. All right. What I, the, my whole intention of that episode, and on top of that, my whole intention on a follow-up um, video that I put out about Ida Rodriguez talking about black people and Latin people need to unite. My whole intention in those two videos and, and putting out this episode out is to show the historical benefits of what happens when we do unite where well, i'm not here taking tallies of who did more work and what did what and all this either way we're still both in a fucked up position white supremacy is still on our necks we still get judged by white supremacists by walking in their neighborhoods so miss me with all that hoes. This person did more than this person. How come y'all riding our coat? Stop. I'm showing you guys historical benefits that happens when we unite. When we unite. Yes, black people in the civil rights movement did pave the way for immigrants to come in here. They, did it, they didn't do it intentionally. Let's keep it real. They didn't do it intentionally. Why? Because white supremacy used Latin people as a pawn to undermine the black community economically. So let's keep it real. The civil rights movement was never about bringing immigrants in. Let's keep it real. The civil rights movement was to give rights to black people, which they deserve. The thing is, the systematic oppression of white supremacy saw that as opportunity to say, let's undermine that community. How are we going to undermine the community? Let's bring outside forces in. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. But anyway, these are the, these are the type of things that we don't need around us. You know what I'm saying? We don't need to be comparing each other with anything, all this other stuff. Nah, get out of here with that. You know what I'm saying? I said that from 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 jump. You know what I'm saying I said that from jump. We don't need to do none of that shit. 
I mean, let's let's get away from you know um, outside uh, outside uh, uh, oppression. You know what I'm saying? Now, anyway, now moving on to my first topic: Doja Cat. Jesus Christ! Anybody check this out? Doja Cat. My God. So apparently, Doja Cat, um, Doja Cat's song with Nicki Minaj. Came out number one, you know what I'm saying? And she said something about she was gonna show her titties if it came out with number one or something like that. I don't know. But Doja Cat, it came out that you know she her her shit came out with number one and all that. You know, shout out to her. But something else happened when she got, you know, when her her episode, well, I'm sorry, her her song came out as number one. Something else happened. She was exposed on being in alt-right chat rooms and she was exposed about, you know, um, saying like little slick shit. Like her saying the N word with a strong E arm, her saying coded alt-right um, propaganda code words. So a lot of people were like, wait a minute, what the fuck is going on here? Wait a minute, this is some racist shit and all this other That's stuff, which made me kind of self reflect a little bit. I put out an episode which I still thought since I found out this whole Doja Cat thing, I still t- a thought that black people can't be racist. Black people cannot be racist. I'm starting to bring that thought back, and I'm, I'm, let me explain. I see the fact that, you know, I'm seeing th- this co- these colorism channels. I'm seeing these, um, you know, uh, xenophobics channels and all this other stuff. Uh, black folks attacking other black folks. You feel what I'm saying? Black folks attacking other black folks. So what I'm saying is that black people cannot be racist don't don't have the power to be racist outside the black community the only time black folks have the power to be racist is inside the black community this is what i'm seeing and this is how i'm thinking i could be 100 percent wrong somebody please correct me but what i'm saying is black people can be racist this is how i see it black people can be racist inside the black community as long as it's an individual, you know, basis, because black folks don't really hold power like that to affect the whole group, but they can do it in an individual level. You feel what I'm saying? So for, for example, if a black person, you know, for some reason has issues with black immigrants or whatever the case is, and they hold a manager position or they're hiring or they're your their interns or whatever they're hiring for a white boss and they already have that prejudice and you have to go through this person to get a job then yes that's a way that they can affect your livelihood if a, a black person if a black person is you know i don't know in a in a position where they are a realtor or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And they already have a prejudice with colorism, you know, colorism and all that. They have, they are in the position to affect their livelihood. That's what I'm saying in the individual level. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want, I don't want to get flamed out here with saying that. Whoa, what are you talking about? No, I'm. This is one. I could be completely wrong. I could be completely wrong. Let me know. Educate me. But I am, ch- I am trying to walk that back and say, wait a minute, I'm starting to, to see that black people can be racist amongst each other in the individual level. You know what I'm saying? I could be completely wrong. I can be completely wrong, but I don't know. Y'all let me know. You know what I'm saying? But Doja Cat, what she ended up doing was doing all this little racist shit. And then um, it was kind of, it kind of came out that in 20, I think was it 2015 or 2017 or something. She made a song called Didn't Do Nothing. And the the song title Didn't Do Nothing is basically 
it's an alt-right white supremacist code word to make fun of black people on why they're getting uh, harassed by the police. And their thing is that black people always say, oh, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? And it's like a mocking type of thing. And she made a whole song about this. And even in the in the in the in the chorus of the song, you can hear what the hell she's trying to say about it. There's a lot of coons out here trying to give passes to her, but that's not the case. The case is that she said what she said, and she's using a alt-right white supremacist talking point as a song. You feel me? So the shit kind of is like, what the hell is going on? Now I understand that there's a phenomenon of this tragic mulatto because her dad is black, her mom is white. You know what I'm saying? And there is this phenomenon about the tragic mulatto that a lot of mulattoes identify as black and just ride for black. A lot of mulattoes ride for both black and white. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of people come and give them the side eye like, uh, are you really riding for us? You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of mulattoes that ride for white and and they know they never get accepted as being white which is goes to the theme of this uh goes to the theme of this you know um this podcast but they know they will never get accepted as white so they have to go up and beyond and start you know adopting white supremacist culture and talking points in order to be accepted with those white people. You know what I'm saying? Which goes back to my same thing that I'm like, you know, black people can be racist or something, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, so I see that, you know what I'm saying? I see that. And I'm like, kind of sad, I I'm like, wait a minute. Hold up, Doja Cat, I don't know. Like, I didn't know who the fuck she was until, you know, they, uh, I saw what, you know, what I saw. I'm saying I didn't know who the fuck she was, but my whole point is that she, you know, she came out her face and now she's being exposed as a little, you know, a wannabe white supremacist. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sorry, but anybody riding for her or finding excuses for her, you a coon to me. I'm saying you are a coon. I don't want to hear that. Oh no, but what she didn't man. Well, how do you know if it was an alt right? You know, uh, people in there. Name the people who were alt right. Stop it. Stop it. The fact that she's using alt right language. The the fact that she made a whole song that was based on the alt right code words says it all. Stop trying to get excuses for this uh, for this girl. All right. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. That's my whole point. You know what I'm saying? That's my whole point. So, I don't know, man. Are you guys riding with Doja Cat? To me, she's canceled. You know what I'm saying? To me, she's canceled. So, let me know if you guys are still riding for, for Doja Cat. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, going to my next topic, um, FedEx. You Have you guys seen that um, video on FedEx? About the FedEx guys? Um one of the FedEx uh, workers you know it was two two workers two black guys you know and what ended up happening was they were delivering a package to this you know suburban neighborhood and then this guy just calls the, starts calling the cops on them because they might be staking out his spot wait fr- first of all the delusion the grandeur that some of these fucking white supremacists have they think that black folks are on some fucking super secret psyops mission to find out where the fuck they live at. And first of all, that's not even the fucking case, all right? Get the yo, I dr- literally I drive through white people's neighborhoods, some nice fucking, you know, fancy mansion looking neighborhoods all the time. The last thing, I th- actually, I'm not even gonna lie. Sometimes I do think I'm like, yo, let's do a home invasion or whatever. But I know for a fact I won't get, I won't go far. You know what I'm saying, I know for a fact I won't go far. 
I will not go as far as like a block or two. You know what I'm saying? Let's get out of here with that. All right. It's a lot. It's that's the reason why it's more easier to, for one of us to rob each other than to actually rob a white person. Come on, like they they the police the, the police put a lot of a lot of protection in white communities. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, like. You mean to tell me a black person is going to put on a FedEx um, get up, drive a FedEx truck, pretend to deliver a package to stake out your spot? Who the fuck are you, Superman? You know what I'm saying? This dude is the bald headed Lex Luthor? Like, what the? who the fuck are you? You feel me? Shit didn't even add up. So, my man basically said, yo, I go through this shit all the time. I go through this shit all the fucking time. You know what I'm saying? And which is fucking insane which is insane so what ended up happening was there was a story that came out saying that they both got fired they both of those black guys got fired from fedex and these two ended up putting up a gofundme you know what i'm saying getting a lawyer which is something they should have done getting a lawyer and their gofundme got like twenty thousand something in a couple of days, I I contributed to that goal for me. I put in fifty bucks. I'm saying, um, but that goal for me like reached like crazy amount of money. But the thing is, FedEx put out a statement saying like, "Yo, we never really, we never really fired them. That's crazy. It was um one of the the one of the distributors that did. Um, they're not fired. Let's hire them back." They're going to get hired back and all this other stuff. And now they're in talks or whatever the case is. All I'm saying is no. You got these guys are in a very particular position right now. They got racially profiled and harassed. On top of that, the distributor fired them. They should be suing the distributor and that fucking guy right there because it could have been a dangerous situation. It could have been a very dangerous situation. The fact that you got two black guys, work, uh, FedEx workers, and then now you're going to get harassed? Are you fucking kidding me? They can't just fucking work? Are you stupid? You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Come on now. The shit doesn't even add up. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is them two should lawyer up, you know, get that money from GoFundMe and all that and fucking sue the shit out of their distributor, whoever fired them and that white dude. You know what I'm saying? Because he racially profiled them and racially being racially profiled is, I think it's a crime. So. You know what I'm saying? Get your money, bro. Get your money. You know what I'm saying? But going, um, moving on to my next topic right now. Um, Joe Biden. Oh my God. Did you guys fucking hear the Breakfast Club interview? Joe Biden. Jesus Christ. I'm going to let you guys, I'm going to let you guys hear the the small clip that went that made everybody go crazy it's a long way until november we got more questions you got more okay. questions but i tell you if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or trump and you ain't black it don't have nothing to do with trump it has to do with the fact i want something for my community i would love to see take you a look at my record man i extended the voting racks 25 years i have a record that is second to none the NAACP has endorsed me every time I've run. What? No, come on, dude. Come on, man. No, you can't be. You can't be saying ignorant stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, th this is the thing. The Democratic, the Democratic Party, the same thing with Latin people. They've been trying to bamboozle black people for this whole time, and they're seeing that black people are not going for the okie doke. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it real. There's a new awakening that is happening. Black people are waking up and getting woke. They're not falling for the same bullshit tricks. All of that shit that he just talked about, that works for older people. That doesn't work for the young generation. That does not work for the young folks. If you're not talking about actually doing something tangible, then you're not talking about anything. You're wasting my time. 
because remember what he just oh well, look look at my record look let's look at your record you really didn't do shit you really didn't do shit joe remember guys joe biden he voted for the prison right act to even put more time in jails you know what i'm saying for prisoners for, for last time i read come on he's not doing nothing good you know what i'm saying i'm not saying the republicans are any good either but i'm just saying you know what i'm saying also what i'm seeing is that latin people are starting to become the new voting block for the democratic party because they are seeing that black people are getting woke they're actually starting to say listen fuck all of that we want something you know what i'm saying we want tangibles we want this and democrats ain't gonna do it so they're gonna look at us and say okay this is our new minorities so once we get our abuelas and our and our people and all that now you can have your little quinceañeras here and let's have all the immigrants come in you know what i'm saying that's what the democrats are gonna do the democrats is gonna start saying immigrant 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 to the latin folks in reality immigration isn't isolated in the latin community whatsoever there's a lot of immigrants everywhere all right the thing is that latin people are the largest you know non-white people in america you know what i'm saying we are i think was the last time i checked was 18 was 17 or 18 percent or something like that we're the law we're, we're the largest i think asian people actually beat us but anyway we're, so we're the largest in that racially hierarchy you know what i'm saying so they're gonna they already they barely even talk about us so what they're gonna do is use us use us to go against black people because they don't want to get give no reparations to black folks and all that they're gonna just ignore them and say well um guess what now we'll just go to our pedros and marias over here and let you guys you know you know what i'm saying that's what they're gonna do we shouldn't fall for the okie doke and this is what i'm telling my latin people latin people we need to stand together and help our black folks get reparations all right if we aren't going to vote and reparations on that ballot box guess what at least go out to vote for reparations for black folks for black americans you know what i'm saying that's what we need to do because guess what when we need their help they'll do it also you know what i'm saying this is how unity works this is how unity works so with that being said that whole Joe Biden thing that he talked about, that shit works for the church crowd. You know what I'm saying? That shit works for the uh, for, for the people who's been used to just voting Democrat. It's like a tradition for them. Every four years, oh, it's just my tradition. I gotta wear my hat, get my little pin, and go out there and just vote Democrat. It doesn't matter who it is. I just gotta vote Democrat because Democrats are the good ones. What have Democrats done for you? It doesn't matter. I gotta go vote either way. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people like that, believe it or not. There's a lot of a lot of people like that. They just vote out of tradition. Because my grandmama's grandmama, grandmama did it. I gotta do it too. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of Latin people are going through that same thing too. Because my abuela, abuela, abuela is doing it. I gotta do it too. You feel what I'm saying? So with that being said, now, now Joe Biden. Yeah, well get get out of here. Get the whole get out of here, yo. You know what I'm saying? And he tr he tried to um walk back his comments like he didn't really mean it. He didn't really say it. Nah, fam, you said it, bro. You said it. You know what I'm saying? You you said it, bro. You said it. Um, he he really he really tried to really you know maneuver his way into like yo I didn't no you said it. You know what I'm saying you you said it, bro. You said it. But it is what it is. What you guys think? You know what I'm saying? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, moving on to my next topic, um, the Spotify deal with Joe Rogan. So I touched, I touched a small, I touched, I touched on this a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I touched on this a little bit on one of the videos I did about um, these two white women's podcast talked about uh, call her daddy. I touched uh, I touched it on a little bit. Now, 
Joe Rogan came out and said that, yo, um, I signed a licensing deal for, I think it was an X amount of years or whatever, for Spotify to exclusively distribute my podcast. And these words are very important. Licensing deal, very important. And, you know, that was a, that was a big blow, not only for YouTube, because Spotify would exclusively put out his videos and stuff. Not only is that a blow to YouTube, but that's also a blow to Apple, Google Play, all of them, right? Now, this is the thing that we have to understand. Nowadays, right? Nowadays, content is king, especially on the advent of this coronavirus. Content is king. Now, Joe Rogan signing that deal is very lucrative, for, not only for him, but everybody out here that's trying to, you know, get into the entertainment industry. Not only entertainment industry, but people who are actually, you know, in the same space, podcasting, on YouTube. You know, these are things that we have to understand and see as lucrative. That's something that we have to see and understand as lucrative. I'm not trying to say that everybody needs to be a Joe Rogan, but if you have a hobby, if you have a unique taste into something, put it out. It doesn't hurt to pull it out put it out there and see what happens, what comes from it. You know what I'm saying? Look what the hell I'm doing. You know, this, uh, this thing was basically something I was studying. You know, white supremacy was something I was studying for countless, countless, countless years. And I just got tired of the, you know, misidentification and the constant, um, you know, the constant confusion within Latin people. You know what I'm saying? And what did I do? I came out and started to talk. You feel me? I came out and started to talk. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. You know, you guys can do it too. I'm not saying in a podcast way, but do it in whatever way you guys think will be possible for you anything if you guys like to cook you know if you are you have a passion in cooking get your goddamn phone you don't have to invest that much get a phone and start cooking with your favorite recipes people will tune in literally there's communities about literally everything all right believe it or not there's communities literally about anything there's communities of people singing in on you know in a fan you know going ah you know what i mean there's communities about everything so don't sell yourself short you feel me and on top of that joe rogan does something very you know very smart you know he licensed his podcast out he didn't sell it and a lot of people who are new to the podcast game or like rappers or anything they end up selling their intellectual property. They they end up selling their copyright. They end up selling everything that is them. They become very big and famous, and now a whole entity and a whole studio and a whole corporation owns you. You know what I'm saying? Look what happened to Prince. He turns himself into a symbol. He couldn't even use the word Prince anymore. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta really look at how the internet nowadays, technology nowadays, can actually elevate someone, you know, way farther than you would think, you know, possible. You know, traditional media like TV and radio, that's dying. This is something we have to understand. Traditional radio is dying. And this deal that Joe Rogan it's did, it's something that we all should be looking at and seeing and copying and saying, wait a minute, that can that could be me you know what i'm saying that could be me you know just something to think about just something to really think about you know what i'm saying now moving on to my to the main topic all right now moving on to the main topic are hispanics slash latin people white part two the reason why it's a part two is because 
this is something I already tackled. This is something I already spoke about. This is something I already done in my on my archives long time ago. All right, long time ago, probably episode fifteen. You know what I'm saying? Actually, let me see if I if I could find you guys the episode number. To be completely honest, let me see. Oh, look at it right here. Look at it right here. Episode 36. Should Latin people be classified as white? Episode 36. This is something I already been talked about. But you know what? It's very good to refresh, you know, refresh the, the, the people because a lot of people are new to the podcast. A lot of people don't go to the archives and talk about it. You know what I mean? There's a lot more new listeners. Now let's, you know, it's, it's always good to come back with the same topics and just give a refresher. You know what I'm saying? Now there's a reason why I am doing this, this episode, because it's actually a listener requested episode. I'm going to let you guys listen to a voicemail. Um, I received um from from this uh from this young uh, out, outstanding football playing brother and all that you know i um, named anthony and he was basically concerned on his puerto rican girlfriend parents you know classifying themselves as white they don't see themselves as black or whatever the case is now um i'm gonna let you guys listen to the voicemail but again i've always put my number down in the description below I've always done that. So anybody, my my phone, my phone, my phone has been open ever since. Anybody could reach out and talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Some people do, some people don't. So that's why I've always said you guys could always reach out to me and you know hit me up and leave a voicemail. You know what I'm saying? But let's let's listen to what Anthony has to say. Yeah, man, what's good with you, man? Um it's your boy Anthony, man. Um, I play college basketball. Just came across your um, podcast the other day, man. And um, I, I wonder, um, you know what I'm saying? You call me back and you, you get in touch with me. I, I wanted to, to share a couple of things with you, man. I noticed, man. See, my girlfriend, man, I love her to death. She Puerto Rican, but her family, you know what I'm saying? They, they had a complex that they think that they not Negroes compared to white people. And they had this illusion, but every time, like, they go to work or I see them or they're in the public and I go out with her, um, white people talk shit to these people and, and they, they don't have no smoke for them, but they, but they're quick to judge me and her, her other sister. She, she thinks black guys too, but they're, they're quick to judge us, but these white people talk shit to her mom, her daddy, her family. Like, they treat them like shit, but they still think that they're white. So I just wanted to, um, you know what I'm saying, just tell you the story. Man, I got some more stories for you, man. Like, that is just me with your mind. You be like, oh, nah, man, that's a hate to the sense. But uh, my number three. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna cut it there. I'm gonna cut it there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put the brothers a whole number out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna, not gonna, I'm not gonna do them like that. You know what I mean? But, but Anthony, th this episode again is for you. You know what I'm saying? This episode again is for you. So, um, as you guys heard, he has a Puerto Rican girlfriend. Shout out to him. You know, they're probably a nice couple and all that. You know, learning from each other and shit. He has a Puerto Rican girlfriend and her parents, you know, they have this white European complex, this white European mentality. Now as Latin people, we have to understand something. What I've been saying from the jump, from the start of me coming out with this, with this podcast, trying to educate Latin people and getting away from that European mentality. I've been saying it from the jump that Latin people, we are not white. We should not be considered as white and we shouldn't be seeing ourselves as white. I'm going to go through the history and I'm going to let you know why. All right. Now they are white people in these Latin American countries. 
That's because their parents migrated from Spain or from other European countries and just settled in these Latin American countries. And they so happy happened to intermingle with other Europeans. That's it. That should tell you a lot. But anyway, that's it. You know what I'm saying? That's it. So there are white people there. Are there white Latinos? No, they're not white Latinos. Nope. Being Latin by definition means that you're mixed with black, which is African, indigenous, which is Indian, and European, which is Spanish or Portuguese in certain cases. That's what makes people Latino, right? Also on top of the fact that we've been subjugated by the Spanish and the Portuguese, our enslavement, our situation is different. But anyway, these white people in these places are not Latin. And there's a reason why I say Latin and I don't use the word Hispanic. It's because Hispanic is a very wrong identifying term. Because Hispanic means close, close enough or originating from Spain. That's not something that we should be identifying as and we should stop using that term Hispanic. I've always said that. Hispanic is a made up term that does not define us. Latin does. Have you ever noticed when other people from Latin descent are talking about empowerment, talking about um, freeing our people, talking about uniting with black folks, they never talk, call themselves Hispanic. They call themselves Latin. There's a reason for that because power, power and empowerment comes from words. And once you start identifying yourself a certain way, you start walking with a different switch. You start actually seeing yourself as different because Hispanic, you're still calling yourself a slave. You're still seeing your last name as identification of that Spanish um, settler came in to enslave your people. There's a reason why us Latin people have last names like Batista, Rodriguez, Maldonado, Ortiz, Laura. You know what I'm saying? There's a reason why Latin people, Mendez, you know what I'm saying? There's a reason why Latin people have those type of common last names is because we were all enslaved by the same Spaniards. It's a hard pill to swallow my Latin people. Familia, listen, it's a hard pill to swallow. I get it. But this is something that we have to be real about. White folks, they know who the fuck is white. Back in the day, Irish, Italians were not considered white because you can't, this whole race thing, to be honest, to be completely black, there's no such thing as black or white. There's no such thing as black people. That's a whole construct. That whole race shit, that's a whole construct. There's no such thing as white folks whatsoever. That's a whole construct. But we have to play the game since we live in the system that these people make rules upon. We have to play the game in the system of white supremacy. Regardless how, how you, however you don't want to call yourself black, regardless how, however you want to identify yourself in the system of white supremacy, they're like, okay, Negro, you're still going to be identified as I tell you are. You know what I'm saying? Not letting them identify you and still having taking them mental enslavement chains off of your brain is a powerful thing. But sometimes we, in order to take that enslavement chains out of your brain, we have to start identifying ourselves as we see fit. And by the fact that we see ourselves as white folks see us as non-white people is very important extremely important for empowerment. Why? Because I know it's a very hard pill to swallow. I get it because I'm telling you guys is that forget that protection barrier that you see from white folks. Forget that comfort that you see from white folks. Forget 
that protection ideology that um that Jesus idol that you see from white folks. Forget all of that. I'm crushing your whole world apart. And I know it's a bitter pill to swallow. I know the coons right now are hating me. But my Latin people, we are not white. The majority of us, if you go through any stat, the majority of us Latin people are melanated and there's a reason for that. White people are not melanated. White people lack melanin. There's a reason why we are majority melanated. Now, why is that? Hmm. Let's think about it. Even the lightest person looking like Antonio will not burn in the sun. I will guarantee you, he will at least bake and turn brown. White folks will run around red as shit, putting on, you know, sunscreen and all that. Antonio doesn't have that type of problem. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that. The thing is that us Latin people, we have to identify ourselves with black or indigenous. Two things, Indian or black. There's a reason why. Not because we need to be cool with black. If, listen, if you guys don't want to be cool with black folks, that's cool. That's cool. There's other black folks that don't want to be cool with black folks. You know what I'm saying? I'm not out here trying to say if you don't want to do that, be all kumbaya. That, that's cool. Y'all could do your own thing. Y'all not rocking with me, though. You know what I'm saying? If y'all don't want to be you know, down to unite, that's cool. That's all your prerogative, but you ain't down with me. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is we as Latin people need to identify within black or native. And I'm going to tell y'all why. The majority of Latin people genetically, the majority of us have at least, at least 65% Spanish blood or lower. At least the highest amount is 65%, the highest amount. If we do run into another Latin person with more like 75, or 80 yes that would be more visible with their skin color but other features will manifest like hair and facial features which we call phenotype right on top of that their light skin will not burn in the sun which is another feature that comes from indigenous and african culture not culture, but genetics. That's where it comes from. The reason why a lot of Latin people classify themselves as white is because we are scared to go against white mommy and white daddy. We have been taught in this country that we need to identify as white, identify as white, identify as white for protection. Funny thing is, that protection never came. That protection never came with the Mendez versus Westminster. That protection never came with the Young Lords. That protection never came for those Black Panthers um, that had Latin people inside those um, organizations. Those protections never came for the Brown Barrettes. Those, those protections never came for the 87, um, Prop 87 in California. Those protections never came when they incarcerated and jailed those babies from the borders and put them in cages. Where is the protection? We're supposed to be white. We are supposed to be classified as white. This is what white folks tell us, but their treatment is different, which tells us something that they do not believe their own bullshit. My people, gente familia, check this out.
we should not be identifying as white whatsoever. And for my people who are still calling themselves mixed, mixed isn't a race. That's a cop out. I got to call it how I see it. You got to choose one thing. I know it's very hard. I understand you guys are probably hating me right now, but it is what it is. You got to choose one. You got to call. I call it how I see it. You got to choose one. You're mixed. Yeah, I'm mixed too, but I choose one. You know what I'm saying? Because what happens is when we start running around talk, calling ourselves, oh, I'm mixed, I'm mixed, I'm mixed. That bears confusion because when the shit hits the fan, who are you riding with? Who are you going to ride with? Are you going to ride for white mommy and white daddy? That's why a lot of us sees whoever calls themselves a mixed. We always see them as, okay, you're a traitor. We don't need a rock with you. Nah, you're good. Stay away over there. I'm okay. We don't need to be rocking with nobody thinking that they're mixed or claiming that they're mixed. You know why? Because that bears confusion. And when what confusion comes in? Coonery. They'll be confused mixed coons. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've seen it happen. Historically, we've seen it happen. We've seen it happen. No other person that will fight for the power their own people call themselves mixed. Please show me where. Please show me where. You know what I'm saying? So going back historically, we've been classified, us Latin people has been classified as white literally throughout times from 1900s to the 1950s, the 60s came, they changed it up. That's when you started hearing Hispanic, something that we never agreed on, but they kept on pushing that little bullshit into our heads. And now we got some coons calling ourselves Hispanic, which isn't true and should not be an identifier because that's just another way of saying white and just breaking down the word Hispanic. Breaking down the word Hispanic, right? Hispanic, let's spell it out, people. H-I-S-P-A-N-I-C. Now let's break it more down. H-I-S. Let's stop. His. His. Hmm. His. Who is his? If we break his down and look at the other work is panic, who is panicking with our presence? His panic, his panic. Who is panicking with our presence? Maybe if we say white is panicking because we're around that's the reason why the white flight started happening when we started moving into the neighborhoods it didn't only happen to black folks it happened to us too we were classified as white so many times we were still being lynched in texas it happened we were class we were still walking around here calling ourselves white el paso the whole mass shooting happened it happened he didn't see he didn't see all those Mexicans, all those Latin people he was shooting down as his brethren. He would never do that. He saw them as an invasion. Why? Because white supremacists, the extreme white people, see you as an other. See you the same way some Latin people see black folks as an other. We are no different. This is something I've been telling Latin people from the jump. Latin people, we are no different from black folks. There's some differences in treatment. There are some differences in history, but we are no different than black folks. I've been telling you guys from episode motherfucking one to episode motherfucking 91. There is no difference. None whatsoever. For the other ones that think that there is a difference, well, there is a difference. Save it. 
Save it. Get your own podcast, do your own thing, and we'll see. Save it. You go that way. For the other ones who want to rewrite history and talk about, well, there is a difference. In 1974, you know, La Raza was actually... Shut up. Save it. Rewrite history on your own time. All right? I'm not calling myself a historian. I'm not giving myself that label. I'm a student. I'm still learning. But what I'm learning, it's some real shit. I'm not just making shit up because I went to a fucking lecture with some dude in an onk telling me what real history is and I can't fact check it. You know what I'm saying? Let's save it. Let's actually re uh, sit down and really read what the fuck is going on. All right? But those of y'all that think that Jewish people are attacking everything else, save it. Save that shit. Get the fuck out of here. No. The fact of the matter is, Latin people we should not be identifying as white whatsoever. Why? Because we automatically gonna put ourselves in a bag that is going to harm us and our community negatively. If we start identifying as white, we are telling ourselves we are not from these countries, this Caribbean, these Caribbean countries. South American countries, Central American, Mexican countries with a great rich of history. That's what we're telling ourselves. We're telling ourselves we come from Europe, a place that had to actually kill and rape and pillage and be culture vultures to get something that they never got. Latin people, we have a rich history that we shouldn't even be considering ourselves as white whatsoever we have a rich 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 history a lot of our history is forgotten and swept under the rug which i am a huge 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 advocate for so we could start learning our history a lot of it is swept under the rug you know what i'm saying there's a lot of it that's swept under the rug now let me go a little bit deeper let me go a little bit deeper now for those Latin people who are light skin, white skin, some white passing, that's cool. We don't knock ya. But remember, other features will give ya away. Hair, phenotype, and the lack of burning on the in, under the sun. Other features will give ya away. That's not who I'm talking to. Even you guys should not be classifying yourselves as white. The reason is because, again, since we've, our people has been subjugated by our language being beaten away from us, our religion being away, beaten away from us, by our culture, some of it, some of it beaten away from us, some, some of our culture we actually got from Africa, you know, some of it we actually got from Africa. You know, um, with all of that, basically abused and, tr and, and mishandled all of that. We are still going to walk out here saying that we are fucking white. We are really telling our ancestors is, yeah, I'm the Christian that pillaged my own people. I'm the conqueror who beat my native language out of my own people. I'm the destroyer and the rapist that brought in the seas and robbed the gold from my people. That's what you're saying when you're calling yourself white. I'm not talking about the real white people who have European ancestry who settled in these countries. I'm not talking about you. You're really white. Get the fuck out of here. We're not talking about you. I'm talking to my people who are confused. All right. That's who I'm speaking to. A lot of us are confused. And the fact that this young brother had to fucking send me a voicemail. Because these two old coons. I classifying themselves as white. 
But yet he tells me that the father got beat up by police. The father right now is suing the city, but yeah, he's fucking white. Why should you go through all of that? You're white. What's going on? Your white card not working? That don't happen to white folks. Last time I checked, that shit never happened to white folks. What's going on? Is that what it is? They not they don't know that you're from that Puerto Rico is actually from a very small island in Spain in Spain, out of Spain? Is that what it is? It's just a coastal island out of Spain, right? Is that what it is? Yeah? Yeah, that little uh, 67% white got your brain all fucked up. Yeah, that what it is? Okay. All right. Because them police officers saw you and they were like, yeah, you're not white. We know who the fuck white, white is. Papi, you not white. Look at that nose. Look at that hair. You ain't white. Get your stupid, get your Negro ass down in the pavement. And that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to, to my brother's girlfriend. She's at least, you know, you know, getting, getting uh, more educated. She's getting more, as, as the kids say, more woke. <laughs> I'm saying she's getting more, more woke. Shout out to her. Shout out to her because we need more people like that. And some of the coons are going to be like, well, we need, what, what you saying? We need more people to sleep with black folks. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is. We need more people to actually be aware of the situation, aware of what position we hold, and aware of what the fuck is going it's on. You know what I'm saying? We're not just going and dying on that hill that's called white. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm referring to. Shout out to her. Wish her the best. Wish them the best. Hopefully they stay together for a while. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully they stay together for a while, but I wish them the best. You know what I'm saying? But it's sad, extremely sad that I had to get a voicemail like that. It's sad that still 2020 with the advent of the internet throughout this whole coronavirus, people are going online and consuming more information as they can. And you're still sitting here thinking that you're fucking white. You are spitting in the face of your ancestors. Do you, do you guys know that? Just because you have white skin does not make you white. You are, you're an advent of rape. Believe it. It's a hard pill to swallow, I understand. Believe it. That white skin is a product of rape. Believe it. That's the only way you'll have white skin. Because guess what? Back during slavery, there was a lot of confusion. There was a lot of confusion. The Spaniards and the Portuguese did something very different that the English and the French didn't do. They raped those slaves. And the product that came out, they actually accepted. That's the reason why Latin people now have an identity crisis. Latin people now don't know which way to go to identify with. Because one, when we're in America, I'm talking about America only. Because when we're in America, our history is not being taught. Everything else is being taught. You know what I'm saying? Even shit. I don't even listen. Most of black history is not even taught. All right most of black history and that's fucking crazy black people have one month to learn about the same people every fucking time and it always goes back to slavery black people have a huge history and it goes back to what so you're not gonna talk about all the other accomplishments that uh, the black people did before slavery you're just gonna focus on that you know what i'm saying so black people are not even taught that but forget that latin people we're not even mentioned we know more white history than we know our own. So what y'all have to do? Y'all have to start self-educating, right? Y'all have to go find a podcast named The Radical Latino and start getting your information from me. You have to go now fact check everything that I'm saying 
isn't some loony shit. I, I'm like I'm like the Latin version of Alex Jones. Yeah, I gotta go do all of that because you guys were not educated in the system of white supremacy. Do you blame them? Why would I need to educate my slaves? This is what they thinking. Why do I need to educate my slaves for? Leave them ignorant. Don't let them know that they were kings and queens back in the day. Don't let them know they actually were royalty. Don't let them know that they actually had gold um, and had civilizations miles and miles long. For what? I'm not going to tell them that. I'm going to say that you guys come from mud huts. I'm going to say that if it wasn't for me, you guys wouldn't know what bathing is, what civilization is. You guys would still be primitive and savage. That's what I'm going to tell my slaves. And that's what white supremacy tells black and Latin people. You see, we are no different. We are no different, but that's what Latin people are taught. That's what Latin people are taught. I remember back in school, PS 117, never forget it. It was one, actually it was a day after Black History Month. I raised my hand and I said, teacher, teacher. I was a fucking class fan. Teacher, is this gonna be on the test, teacher? No, no, no. Um, I, I raised my hand and I said, hey teacher, um, when will it be, at that time, I don't know what Latino, Hispanic, the difference was, but when will it be Hispanic History Month? The teacher stopped, looked at me with a straight face and said, Speaks didn't do anything for this country and then went back to writing. I said, oh shit. Oh, god damn, white man. Now forget it. Bald white man with a thick mustache looking like he's a fucking a detective from NYPD. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. Guess what happened? Everybody laughed. I even laughed. I was like, okay, I guess I didn't do shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? We laughed. And it's funny that it took that memory to still stick with me to understand that Latin people did a great deal of history in this country. And we are still able to do more and contribute more in this country. And it's sad and pathetic that it takes me to actually push this out episode on top of episode on top of episode to let y'all know where y'all really come from. It's sad and pathetic. Not to you guys. It's sad and pathetic that the system that we live in is a constant reminder of the position that we live in and the position that we're in. It's a constant reminder. If you ever forget, try to do something a white, a white person would do. They'll remind you real quick. You know what I'm saying? They will remind you real quick who the fuck you are. And the, the thing is that it's, I started this podcast trying to self-educate, not only myself, cause I'm still learning, not only myself, but my Latin people around me. I started this podcast to help restart the unity a black and brown unity. I started this podcast to get my Latin people away from that European mentality. And so far I'm doing a damn good job, but not a damn good job enough because you have, um, unfortunately that voicemail just shows me that the older generation is still on that coon shit. The older generation still believes that coon shit. The older generation is on that. Let's get along with white mommy and white daddy. How has that helped us so far? Let me know how that helped us so far. Cause I haven't seen no benefit from it whatsoever. I have not, I haven't seen a benefit from it, but the fact still remains that black and Latin people, we are a subjugated group 
that's that's a bitter pill to swallow. I'm sorry, but it's a hundred percent true. You know, we are a subjugated group. We are a group that did a lot for this country, but are still subjugated in the system that is called white supremacy. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This is, you know, a part two from episode 37 or whatever. I'm saying that I already did. So it's always good to refresh it. You know what I'm saying? If you guys like what you heard, um, hit me up on Instagram and Twitter so we can all debate or leave a comment down below at radical underscore Latino underscore. Also, you could donate to Cash App, dollar sign Radical Latino, or go to my website, radicallatino.com, and go to donate. Um, a lot of interesting things is going to come out um, in the following weeks. Um, I'm Again, I'm trying to secure a very special, special, special interview for you guys i know you guys will enjoy it i know you guys will learn from it that's my main thing is just learning again my voicemail and phone is always open all right it's always open anybody that wants to just talk or leave a voicemail just to for, for me to do episodes like this or to have your your questions answered just hit me up i'm just a couple of numbers away you know what i'm saying I'm always a couple of numbers away. Um, I haven't gotten, you know, I haven't gotten anywhere. <laughs> you, you, you feel me? Um, also, uh, just look out for a trailer coming soon with my merch. I'll be announcing that. Remember, um, I got a couple of, couple of images of my merch up or whatever the case is. Um, it's only going to be a limited run for three months. From, um, for the summer only and that's it I just want to see how things go you know if you guys like it cool you guys don't all right cool you know what I'm saying and um, also for episode number 100 I'm planning on having you know you guys call in for for just a it's just basically like a is I'm, I'm gonna try to see if I could do a live podcast try to see if I could do that again <laughs> a live podcast and see how that goes you know what I'm saying hopefully it doesn't get uh it doesn't get all fucking crazy and shit you know what I mean but with that being said I'm gonna catch you guys later and I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna catch you guys later all right peace